7.41 this morning. We should talk about the football last night. Um, basically everything we predicted. A two-goal win for Liverpool. A routine enough away win. And a close, tight game for Manchester City, but they came through. I'm not fully confident Man City are going through in the two legs just yet, but I'm 100% confident, Nathan, that Liverpool are home and hosed. Uh, that third goal certainly seemed to seal it for them. They were impressive last night. I thought Trent Alexander-Arnold was outstanding. Like the talent this guy has, the range of passing at 23, this pass for the second goal for Luis Diaz, he set up Mo Salah with the first-time ball from deep inside his own half, straight over the top. Almost felt like it had a bit of backspin on it. Uh, Salah didn't take the chance. I missed quite a few chances. But like Trent Alexander-Arnold has sort of reimagined what that position is uh, not just for Liverpool, but for for right backs in general. He is Salah would win Footballer of the Year, but you know, Alexander Arnold has got to be right up there behind him. Salah's a little bit of a blip at the moment. I mean, by his standards, no goal in six games is it now? Um, uh, that's the type of thing that actually allows Trent to nip in and steal the awards if they win everything. If if and listen, the next uh, week or two will decide all that. And it's not the best time for Mo Salah to be having that little dip when your next run of games is Manchester City at the Etihad, Benfica second leg, Manchester City, Manchester United, Everton. But Salah goes through these spells every so often. And even last night, his control seemed to let him down a lot. It, that chance that Alexander-Arnold sent him in behind, like, every day of the week you expect Mo Salah to finish that. So maybe there is the tiredness, maybe there is the upset, which is understandable of missing out in the AFCON and on the World Cup finals. But generally in the biggest games, and the biggest games are coming up, that is where Salah always delivers, where he always gets his goals. So he wouldn't be in any way shocked if he broke that duck at the weekend. But Liverpool were good again. Like the big difference with Liverpool at the moment is the strength of depth. You look at that bench that they had last night, and they have backup in pretty much every position, whether you know Joe Gomez, who filled in for Alexander-Arnold at the weekend, at right back. Uh, Joel Matip was left among the substitutes last night. Chimic has done a good job at left back. They had all sorts of options in midfield. Henderson was left on the bench. Milner's there. Oxlade Chamberlain, Minamino. And then they've Jota and Firmino as attacking substitutes. So, from a position where at Christmas we were looking at Liverpool compared to Manchester City, saying, do they have the squad for a run like this? Like, for a run like this in the space of two weeks where you're playing five season defining games, you can leave out Jota and Henderson and Matip last night. And there's no real dip at all. In fact, the players who come in, Kieta had a really strong game last night. You don't night. want Oxide Chamberlain and Minamino being key players over the next four or five weeks, though. You don't really. No, but you, they're you, not good enough. But, but you can play them in the second leg against Benfica when you got a two goal advantage and not That's overly fair. worry about it. So <laughs> I think it was straightforward. Benfica, uh, listening to the BT commentary, Steve, Steve McManaman had watched a lot of Benfica uh, this season, uh, was saying how generally they're an awful lot more aggressive than they were in the first half last night. They really set off Liverpool. Probably showed them a little bit too respect. Liverpool took full advantage. There was half an hour where Benfica got the goal. Canate made a bad mistake. Crowd is up. Their backs are up. And you felt that maybe there was an opportunity because of the way the Champions League always works. As you say, at Manchester City, you just get caught somehow in the second leg. But I think the third goal kills it off. Yeah, that Nunes chance at 2-1 down. If he doesn't go down in the box, he actually turns that into an effort, it could be a, a different story, but it's about seeing it out. Like you'd, you'd have to say that that depth conversation has flipped in Liverpool's favour. That's not to say that Manchester City's depth is not existent. It's excellent as well, but you'd have to say that Liverpool slightly edged them at the moment when it comes to your 15, 16 men. Well, there was no kids on Liverpool's bench last night compared to Manchester City's where you know, they had Egan Riley and Mbappé Tabu, you know, two players who you're never going to use in a Champions League quarterfinal, semi-final. Now, they did have Phil Foden and Jack Grealish on the bench, who are two absolute game-changers, as Foden showed last night. They're obviously just resting Foden up for, for the Liverpool match on Sunday. So, yeah, Liverpool have that sort of depth where you can rotate your midfielders. Do they know what their best midfield is? Is he 100% sure? He's quite happy rotating the front three constantly now. Uh, but City, when you have Grealish and Foden, and like, who are you taking out of that front three, midfield three, uh, that lessens them in any way. I still think they have the top, top quality of two players who can make an impact off the bench always. Jesus was on the bench yeah. last night. Uh, maybe Ruben Diaz somehow squeezes back for the weekend, which would be geez, huge for them, uh, even though Laporte has arguably been their best centre half this season. But it was the one thing I thought coming off last night watching City was this just looking at their well, everything that's happened to them over the recent seasons in the Champions League, going to Madrid for the second leg. 
you just get stung somehow you get stung last couple of minutes and then all the questions come up again yeah I'm not I'm not convinced that they're they're home and hosed at all I think that that's uh, very much on a knife edge at this stage and I thought that uh, Atletico played really well compared to some of the stuff that we would have expected from them eight, nine weeks ago before the Man United games they weren't in a great run of form and uh, that seems to have been some kind of a turning point for them mm. it was, like it was this sort of Graham Art form wasn't it the first half where literally nothing happened uh, Atletico with their two banks of five I was watching the BT commentary and they're like 10 minutes in oh this has been an excellent start from Man City I'm like no it hasn't no, this is exactly happened. what happened this is you, you feel like you're in the game you're not in the game you're having like headers from corners that are going way over it's like oh this is a great chance like no no no, this, is, this has nil all written all over it. And wasn't there like an, an artsy movie done of the Empire State Building in the 60s where it was like three hours long and it was just a still image basically of the Empire State Building and everyone was like, this is amazing, this is high, high art. Uh, but it's not. And that's not what the first half was yesterday. It was Atletico just completely digging in and doing it really successfully to the point where you thought they're going to break once here and get one big chance. It wasn't even a half chance that the opportunity they had in the 50th minute, I think it was Lorente, which, well, which didn't even go down as a shot. Well, the, the Griezmann with his shit pass that actually ended up being a throw-in uh, yeah. when he was, he just didn't, didn't have the pace anymore. Uh, there was a Man City corner, was this in the first half? I think it was in the first half. Uh, there was a Man City corner, uh, the ball squirts past Gundogan and it's basically a 75-yard sprint for Griezmann who just couldn't carry it off and he looks over to his, his left and actually shins the ball over the, the sideline yeah like the, I don't think that uh, some if you're looking at Google maybe they, some of the stats said that they had no shot at all yesterday Atletico Madrid and certainly when it comes to not having a shot in the first half it's the first time since 03 04 that they failed to attempt a, a shot in the, in the first half of a Champions League tie so even by Atletico standards this was a, a particularly robust defensive effort especially in that first half the premeditated nature of making three substitutes on the hour mark probably speaks to that as well but Kevin De Bruyne is the person you want to be in those positions and, and maybe Phil Foden proved that as well when he came on last night that they are the people who can unpick the lock and maybe they've learned a lot about last night as well before they go to, to the Wanda I think the goal makes a big difference though when you look at what Atletico Madrid tried to do last night if they were to try and repeat that at home like they did have maybe even three or four opportunities where City had pressed so high up the pitch that one right pass at the right time and you're in behind but City won't need to press as high they won't be as desperate to get a goal because they know they have that. So maybe Atletico Madrid on the counter-attack won't have as many opportunities. But like Atletico Madrid are used to playing these type of games. You said they know exactly what they're about. As watching both games and all the online analysis, was, this is an utterly dominant performance for Manchester City. In the mm. first half. But like, for everybody what? knew it was going to be an utterly dominant to performance. To what end, like, yeah. This is what Atletico Madrid wanted. Let them have the ball. If you're good enough, show it. If you're good enough to score two or three goals against two bags of five, show it. But... They couldn't do it, so yeah, I, I'd say Pep Guardiola will be sweating ahead of that second leg. We had Graham Hunter on yesterday, and he was talking about Diego Simeone being an incredibly superstitious man. I hadn't quite realised the level of the superstition. Obviously, things went quite well for them in their last trip to Manchester, got over Manchester United. He copied every detail. This is according to El Chiringuito, so uh, I hope this is on the money. Uh, he copied every detail from the Manchester United trip for the trip to Manchester City. Both flights left Madrid at half past 11. The same bus, the same hotel, the same hour for the press conference with Marcus Llorente doing the press conference again and training at the exact same hour. So uh, that's the, the level of regimen that we've uh, got from Simeone. And there's definitely going to be a bit of a twist in the, the second leg. It's just an early goal for Manchester City. It's going to be the thing that may score for them. He has spies as well in the Manchester City camp, which allowed him to wear exactly the same clothes as Pep Guardiola last yeah. night. Same shoes, same trousers, <laughs> same coat. Like the, it, is, it is the exact same coat. Yeah. And I mean, they're very rich men who both have like sponsorship deals with designers. And they end up wearing the same. That's very embarrassing. Yeah, and apparently Martin Keown was wearing the, a similar jacket. Oh, was he? Came up in commentary. Um, oh, are these the, the, the coat is the new version of the Pundit Shoes? Yes, the Pundit Shoes. Of course, uh, the Sunday game had taken the Pundit Shoes to a very kind of uniform level, hadn't it? Whether they're all wearing the same. Yeah. Well, they're all, well, they're so, all well, Benetti Matt, Matt, or whoever. Every yeah. English, every English uh, football pundit. Yeah, uh, the White Soul. Today, our Sky, the White Soul Shoes. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, that's a bit different to the Sunday game one, which is kind of more of the... The suede shoe, the brown suede shoe, that's different. That's how you know your sports from one another. Be a good man now for an old Benetti, Benetti ambassador, wouldn't he? Who? Pep? Oh, he'd be all over that. Martin Keown. No, you. Oh, sorry. Get the Benetti. Get the Benetti uh, Yeah, 100%. Hit me, hit me up, Benetti. Maybe they could get you in, in clobber that would get you into Bergheim. <laughs> 7.52 this morning here on OTBAM. 
OTBM brought to you live each morning by Gillette Labs for an effortless finish to your day. It's competition time. Dublin street artist Aix has teamed up with EA Sports FIFA to design an exclusive Dublin City kit for FIFA 2022. The kit with features uh, bright visuals, graffiti style effects and his individual tag will be available in FIFA Ultimate Team from April the 4th. To celebrate its release, we want to give one lucky fan a limited edition Aix City kit jersey designed by Aix along with a copy of FIFA 2022. All you have to do is go to the Off The Ball TikTok, comment on that recent video, any recent video, with the, the you need the code word Pirlo so that we can search for it, P-I-R-L-O. He was a footballer, ask your dad. Make sure you follow us too so we can message you if you're the lucky winner of that brilliant FIFA 2022 prize. Otherwise, we can't tell you that you've won if you don't follow us, so make sure you follow us. Um, that's kind of the whole point of the competition.